What's up, guys, and welcome to the channel. This is Tyler Tote. So today I've been seeing what's been going on in the news. I wanted to make a quick investigation video here today. I've spent the last couple hours diving deep, reading a lot of the text messages back and forth between Russell Brand and his alleged victims, seeing the media's response, mainstream trying to cancel him off everything. I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of takeaways on this, and I think I don't see a lot of people talking about it. When I research this and look into it, everybody always jumps quickly into one camp or the other. We've got one camp that says, this is crap, he's innocent, he's being framed, they're just trying to deplatform him, all this stuff, he's innocent. Then you get the other camp that basically says, this guy's the scum of the earth, let's cancel him, let's believe all women, let's do these things, right? And so, as usual, I try and fall somewhere in the middle, I try and seek out the truth, I try and ask good questions, and see where that leads us. So, hop in with me today, guys, and let's go over what I've learned. So if you don't know who Russell Brand is, pretty famous actor back in the day, he now runs a massive YouTube channel with over 6 million subscribers. He talks most recently about anti-government stuff, about how the system is designed and rigged against you. Now, back in the day from 2006 to 2013, these are when all these alleged incidents occurred. There's four women that have now come out, one publicly who said her name. She's actually shared text messages, some of which are very, very disturbing. Uh, and I'll get into that a little bit more later. But all these incidents happened over 10 years ago. So my first question that I pose is, when Russell Brand was extremely famous and working for the media, and, and they knew about these things 10 years ago, why were these not brought up then? You know, he's making, he's a cash cow back then. He's making Hollywood blockbuster films. He's running his own syndicated radio show. He's an open degenerate doing drugs, talks about having all kinds of sex parties and things like this. People knew about it. All the all the people that are now canceling him today knew about these things back then, but no one reported it. So if we really care about women and we really want to protect women, my first question is why now? Why when we know these things 10, 12, 15 years ago, we're not bringing them up then? We're just starting to bring them up right now when, oh yeah, by the way, he happens to have grown, grown a 6 million person following just on YouTube. And now we want to cancel him off there because we don't like some of the things he's saying. And when I look back, you know, well, it's 12, 15 years ago, what's it matter? Well, I definitely think it still matters, right? Uh, but my question, the bigger one again, is why is this stuff just brought up now? And I think you need to ask yourself some of these questions. And what I see when I read this, and, you know, again, some of these texts are very disturbing. When you read them, it's her basically saying no means no. And he kind of says, yeah, I'm really sorry. I was just on this or that. I didn't, you know, didn't really know what I was doing either, this or that. And he apologizes. How can I make it up to you? Uh, you know, and so he's admitting that, yeah, she said no, and he didn't listen. That's a big deal. That's something that we should obviously not tolerate as a society. That's something that we should obviously, I would hope everyone watching this is against, right? If a female clearly says no, uh, a man who is going to be stronger and bigger, most likely should obviously not be able to force himself upon that woman. I think everybody should acknowledge and agree with that. And so I would obviously start there and condemn that behavior. But when we look back to when this stuff happened, again, 2006 to 2013, all the claims, I just go back to why now? If we really, really, really have this moral compass that these people are now, we have to cancel him because he's this terrible guy, he's this monster, this degenerate. Guys, if you really look at him the last few years, he's sober. He's married with kids. He talks openly about the past and his drug use and how he did all these terrible things. He's not for it. He also talks openly about hating kind of the media, what they do, the elites. He's really anti-government. And really, as he started to gain this notoriety for saying these things, now all these things resurface. Now these things become a big deal. And my big question is why now? If, if we do want to believe and protect women, which I would hope all of us have that, that mindset, why are we waiting until it takes this guy being famous and saying things we don't like until there's a coordinated effort to cancel him? A bigger, deeper disturbing thing that I see is just a pattern of this happening over and over and over again. The most recent one before this, you can look at Andrew Tate. Now, again, I fall in the middle. Some people hear Andrew Tate, they're instantly triggered. This is a terrible guy. He's the worst guy, this and that. Look, you know, Andrew Tate does things and says things I definitely don't agree with, uh, 100%. He also says some things and, and puts things out there that I definitely do agree with. Guys should take ownership, get fit. A lot of, lot of messaging, probably half and half. I don't really agree with the way... He views and treats women a lot of times. Uh, I don't believe you're generally that happy of a person if you need to chase 50 cars and 50 women and things like that. I think you probably have some deeper holes in your soul. 
But that's neither here or there. My point is, as Andrew Tate started to build notoriety and say things against the government, against the establishment, against the media, a lot of these people that I believe are always working together, all of a sudden there's a coordinated effort to it to ban him. All of a sudden now we're looking at the same day, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everybody deplatforms him. He no longer has a message. Now we're seeing the same exact thing repeated again with Russell Brand. You know what? He's starting to get too much notoriety on Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook, on, on you, all these things, all these platforms. Let's, let's silence him. What can we pull up from the past? And where my mind goes to this and the, the question I'd like to pose to everybody is this is what these people do. These people that own media and own a lot of the elites, whatever you want to call it, dude, this is why Jeffrey Epstein's a thing. You know, Jeffrey Epstein would get dirt on people and they'd basically say, you say what we want you to say, Mr. Scientist, you say what we want you to say, Mr. Politician, or this stuff comes out. And I think you're seeing that now. If you don't fall into line and you don't exactly agree with the things they say, these elites and these people will have these coordinated efforts to completely deplatform you, take away your business, take away your ability to say your message, which is just insane to me. And I don't understand how more people don't see it. Now, again, there's there's not just black and there's not just white. I definitely condemn a lot of the things both Andrew Tate did in the past. I think he's owned up for those and said, I wouldn't do those again, running webcam businesses and things like that. But again, a, most of his message today is just take ownership. Guys, get a mission bigger than yourself. Work hard, make money, get fit. Don't just fall into this system and become a cog in their machine. They didn't really like that, man. And so, boom, all of a sudden, coordinated effort to, to imprison him without charges for months. That's pretty terrifying that they can just do that and have that kind of power. Now you're seeing it repeat again with Russell Brand. So, again, I condemn Russell Brand's actions back from 12, 15, 16 years ago. But these same people that knew what was going on back then, that knew what was going on with the Harvey Weinstein back then, that knew all these things, they don't really want to protect women. They don't really care about these things. If they did, they'd bring it up back then. If they did, when they knew these things were happening, this would be an issue, not just when he started saying things they didn't like, not just when he started gaining a lot of eyes and a lot of ears and a lot of people waking up to, you know what, maybe we should ask questions of the media and about COVID and about some of these things that are going on. He poses a lot of these questions and I feel like they think that's a threat. Overnight, now there's a coordinated effort to take him down. I will say the last thing that I'm really happy about and proud about, my biggest platform is Twitter. I have 171,000 followers over there. And I post on there daily. I'm in that space daily. Uh, Elon Musk is the only one to come out and say, hey, look, he hasn't even been charged with this. These are allegations from 15 years ago. I will not deplatform him. YouTube already has. A lot of these other companies already have. And so you're seeing this happen now where when Elon Musk bought Twitter, there's a lot of people against this. They slammed in. They said, oh, he's taking away free speech, this and that. If you really open your eyes and you really see what's going on here, they controlled everything before. Before Elon Musk took over Twitter, if they wanted somebody deplatformed, that was it. They owned Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. All these elites within a day could just, boom, you're done. Now Elon Musk has come in and said, this is going to be the town square. This is where people are going to be able to speak their peace and free and look. If these charges, I think Elon came out and said, if, if everything does come back and he's guilty, yeah, we'll talk about it then. But I'm not having some kind of witch hunt where we're just proven guilty until we can say we're innocent. That's not how our country, that's not how the law works. So I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. As I look into these things, again, people just go to these camps right away and they always just fire talking points from he's either the greatest guy in the world and the elites are all out to get him or he's either the worst guy in the world. We should cancel him and deplatform him. I kind of look at the this story of Russell Brand as almost I see a lot of myself in it, a redemption, right? Now, I'm not accused or didn't do a lot of the things that he did back then. But man, I had a season of my life where if you judged me on what I did in my early 20s, I was drinking six days a week. Uh, my mid-20s, late 20s, <laughs> I, was, I was putting substances in my body that were not good. I was blackout drunk constantly. I was wasting money. I, I never gave a cent to charity. I was not a good person, to be honest. Back in my 20s, everything was about self. I think you saw that from Russell Brand. You saw that from an Andrew Tate, maybe when he was early in his 20s. People are allowed to grow. People are allowed to get better. And I think, you know, this cancel culture and this, this person made mistakes 15 years ago, they shouldn't have a voice now, is the exact opposite approach that I like. 
I like to say, hey, what did you learn from it? Maybe you need to pay a price for it still. Again, reading through those texts is gut-wrenching to me. I have a daughter. I have women in my life that I love. I'll tell you what, man, if, if you know somebody says no that I love and a guy doesn't, there's going to be an issue, right? So I think, again, we can stand up for women. We can champion some of these things and say right is right, wrong is wrong. But also, we can't be judging people from 15, 16 years ago and all of a sudden canceling everything they're saying today because of maybe incidents that they had alleged 15, 16 years ago. I just don't think that's a great bar to set. Uh, I don't know one person. you know, I, I, I can't think of anybody in my life that I know who just has a perfect squeaky clean past, that if we drum up all their past, all their incidents, all their things, you're going to say, oh, yeah, that guy just lived a perfect life, right? I think there's one guy to walk the earth. <laughs> Uh, that was perfect. It's not going to be me. It's not going to be you. And so those are my thoughts. But I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. As I dive in more, there's some really disturbing stuff from back in the day. But again, don't really think that's grounds to just completely deplatform and cancel the guy. I see this as a very coordinated effort to, again, control the speech. We saw this when COVID came around. Any doctors, there were 16,000 doctors that signed this thing, came out. Dr. McCall, a lot of people saying, we need to ask questions on this. We need to ask questions about the vaccine. We need to ask, why are we sitting inside and not getting outside when vitamin D is the best thing <laughs> that you could probably get right now? Why aren't we doing this? These people got deplatformed time and time again. There's this constant pattern of if you don't say what they like, you get deplatformed. I think that's as big of an issue as what happened in the past. I think we need to talk about both those things and have dialogue. So thanks, guys. Tune it in. I appreciate it. Go be kind to yourself. Go be kind to others. Let's go change the world. And let me know your thoughts on this. I'm very interested. I love having talks like this. I feel like we all learn and we all grow from them. So uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Have a great day.